I'm sure a lot of you have watched debates between atheists and theists, especially regarding morality. One of the many talking points that come out in the domain of moral argumentation is the question of, can God arbitrarily pick and choose what is and what is not moral? And another that is raised is, does God love what is moral because it is moral independent of Him? This is generally seen as an issue for divine command theorists because if they were to decide and answer yes to the first statement, then this entails that what is moral is ultimately beholden to the will of God, and God can arbitrarily pick what He wants to be good or evil, and this is not good because He can make formerly evil things good and vice versa. It should be noted here that this critique by the atheist has no basis as they themselves can't account for the existence of good or bad ontologically speaking. Anyhow, if they were to affirm the second part of the dilemma, then they'd be conceding to the atheist that morality exists independent of God's willing of it and it is thus outside of God, so it therefore is not logically necessary for God to be the grounding of the good or morality in general. This dilemma is formerly known as the Euthyphro Dilemma and has been quite a topic of debate for some time within the sphere of theological discourse online. To provide a brief history of this, we can look back at Plato's book, Euthro, where we see it being asked, is that which is wholly loved by the gods because it is holy, or is it holy because it is loved by the gods? Now, fundamentally, this issue of independence juxtaposed to arbitrariness is in fact a false dichotomy. This supposed meta-ethical and metaphysical issue for Christians lies not within the Christian paradigm, but rather it is a latent issue within Hellenic presuppositions. This is where I'd like to introduce St. Dionysius, the Areopagite, who, through his work of laying out true Christian metaphysics, demonstrates how this is not an issue for us, and rather is an issue for Hellenic pagans. Now, uh, St. Dionysius doesn't specifically argue against uh, the pagans here, but we can deduce from his laid out metaphysics that it's an issue for the pagans and not for Christians. This issue lies within the different modes of being between the Hellenic pagans and the Christians. That is to say, the fundamental status of the good in an ontological sense is going to have an effect on the nature of morality. Firstly, let us look into the good as conceptualized by the Platonists and Neoplatonists as opposed to St. Dionysius. The good as conceptualized by the Platonists and in specific Plotinus is equated with the one, which is a metaphysical principle, so to speak, that is distinct from God as it is not omniscient and unlike God it is not personal. The one is the good, but it is also an apparatus that emanates things naturally speaking. And thus, it emanates God. So since God and the one are distinct and the one is the good, it follows that God and the good are distinct. Let's now contrast this with St. Dionysius' conception of the good and its place metaphysically. I quote, Be it so then, let us come to the appellation good already mentioned in our discourse, which the theologians ascribe preeminently and exclusively to the superdivine deity, as I conjecture by calling the supremely divine subsistence goodness, and because the good as essential good by its being extends its goodness to all things that be. And to quote St. Dionysius once more, he says, For as the goodness of deity beyond all permeates from the highest and the most honored substances even to the lowest, and yet is above all, neither the foremost outstripping its superiority, nor the things below eluding its grasp, but it both enlightens all that are capable, and forms and enlivens and grasps and perfects, and is measure of things existing in age, and number, and order, and grasp, and cause and end, and so too the brilliant likeness of the divine goodness, this our great sun, holy, bright, and ever luminous, as a most distant echo of the good, both enlightens whatever is capable of participating in it, and possesses the light in its highest degree of purity, unfolding to the visible universe, above and beneath, the splendors of its own rays, and if anything does not participate in them. This is not owing to the inertness or deficiency of its distribution of light, but owing to its inaptitude for light reception of the things which do not unfold themselves for the participation of light. No doubt the ray passing over many things in such condition enlightens the things after them, and there is no visible thing which it does not reach, with the surpassing greatness of its own splendor. Further, also it contr contributes to the generation of sensible bodies, and moves them to life, and nourishes and increases and perfects and purifies and renews. And the light is both measure and number of hours, days, and all our time, for it is the light itself, even though it was then without form, which the divine Moses declared to have fixed the first triad. As is seen in these quotes, what distinguishes the good in, in the Neoplatonic metaphysic from this is that the good, instead of emanating from the one, it is from God's nature and permeates into his creation. It's not dependent on his creation as it is part of his nature. This is especially seen when St. Dionysius states that good, already mentioned in our discourse, which the theologians describe preeminently and exclusively to the superdivine deity, as I conjecture. So he's placing the good within the nature of God here. Thus, one can say that the youth for dilemma is solved first and foremostly by rejecting the Hellenic presuppositions latent within the argument, those presuppositions being that the good is either outside God or that it is a product of his will. The fact of the matter is that the good is within God's nature, and all the good that we see in the created world is a reflection and derivative of this good within his nature. 
So as a refutation to Christianity, this falls on its face because the place of the good is not something outside God, nor subject to his will. Rather, it is beholden to the very nature of God himself, which is utterly self-contained and self-determined eternally. The very fact within Christian theology that God cannot make himself go out of existence therefore entails that he cannot make the good go out of existence since it is natural to his nature.